everybody and welcome back to the Triple Jump podcast. It's a video game podcast. My name is Ben. My name is Peter. And my name is Ashton. Hey guys, how are we today? Good. You good, Peter? He's nodding. He's you nodding. can't you can't hear him. Yeah, I'm alright. Yeah, he's okay. How are you, um, Ben? Yeah, I'm good. God, there's so many video games. There's just so many video games. So many quip scopes. There is. Oh man, it's been it's been crazy. It's unprecedented. We've had several conversations this week, Peter and I, about we put out too many quip scopes, yeah, okay. but equally, this is un- this is these are hashtag unprecedented times. Mm. We've mean, not yeah. yet come across a time when about fifteen Do important you think games this is bad? released Wait at the same time. Wait till February time. next year. Oh it's going to be real bad. Well, and I mean the the word yeah. "precedented" was used a lot in the past. Uh, sorry, "unprecedented" was used a lot in the past twelve months because. It's what news readers said a lot, isn't About it? COVID, these yeah. unprecedented times. Yeah, and. It, it's unprecedented in that sense as well, in that since video gaming began, there's never really, or not, uh, uh, maybe in its early days perhaps, but there's never really been a time where for a year, you know, a lot of games were pushed. Yeah, pushed. 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 And so as a result, we've almost got a double year's worth, a double crop. Big old backlog. Games, yeah. Comes smashing through. out. But you'll be pleased to know if the quipscopes for some reason irritate you that uh, it's slowing down now. I think, uh, what else? Have we got another one coming? Just trying to think. Is there anything before else before the end of the year? I bet uh, there's something. There must be something. Yeah. Um, yeah, there there's is. The, is that the Halo campaign? Yeah, there's the Halo out. campaign. Halo, yeah. Um, the multiplayer obviously released this week, but <sighs> God, there has to be something else. There's something there else in something December. In December but yeah. I can't think about. What, I can't yeah, remember yeah. what. You it know, is. we'll get back to you on that. Mm. Um, I'm sure there's. There's probably going to be something. Probably something. I can't think of it right now. But either way. Welcome to our video game podcast. Uh, we're going to talk to you about video games. We are, of course, sponsored each and every week by a very real video game adjacent sponsor. I have the ad read here. So this is from uh, Bandai Namco. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. They've reached out. They want us to promote a new sort of Christmas. You okay? Squeak. Shuffle. Squeaks. A uh, new Christmas line of their brand new video game. Um, recently, it had a sort of beta a closed network test, if you will. Mm. Mm. Introducing Elden Ring Closed Knitwear Vest. Closed knit... Cl- is it clothes knitwear vest? Closed. It's closed. It's As in like, like a, a closed... It's, it's like a... Closed, a um, oh, it's, a cl- it's like a zip-up one. No, no it's zip-up. So, it's just closed. Oh, it's, it's just, just a sweater vest. Otherwise, it'd be it's a just one. It's just a whole just one. Just a vest. Yeah, so Nana's are involved, mm. naturally. Of course. Shreddies. And it's nearly Christmas. Elder Ring. It's nearly <laughs> crystal, yeah. Uh, so the Elden Ring closed knitwear vest is uh, going to be coming out very soon and you can buy right. one for your loved ones. What does it look like? I don't know. Closed oh. knitwear. Okay. Warm. A vest. A vest. Yeah. yeah. What do you want? Well, I didn't know if it had a like sample. came in various colours. I haven't or... got a photo of it. I oh, mean, it might be okay. in green. Might be in green. Or red. Okay. You know, cri- cri- crystal, co- crystal colours. Crystals. Yeah. Yeah. Gold. Very crystals. Um, mm-hmm. You know, maybe a bit of... Uh, chicken colour. You have mm. chicken at Christmas, don't you? You do, Delicious yeah. Christmas Cooked chicken. chicken or raw? Just raw, yeah, yeah. pink. Pink. Pinky. Still alive. Real, little pink. Real little pink, pink. Uh, Elden Ring. Closed knitwear vest. Net, 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 knitwear vest. Network yeah. test. Yeah. Thank you. There it is. Sounds that's good. That's coming soon. Or it would if it was real. Sadly, oh. it's not It's not real. Damn it. There was only really a closed network test. Well, what am I going to get for my loved one? <sighs> not that. No singular. Loved vests. one. Uh, no, of course, we're sponsored by our wonderful patrons over at patreon.com forward slash team triple jump, where for as little as $1 per month, you can submit questions. Oh, did you hear that? I did yeah. hear it. I'm trying to point for, <laughs> for emphasis. Questions. Oh, questions Crunch. for this podcast. And you support us in the process, and we super duper appreciate it. There's loads of tiers available with all sorts of incre- incredible rewards in it. Mm. Do you know how else people can support us? How? By liking our Facebook page. Or following. Or following. Or both, whatever it's called. Here's the thing. You don't even have to interact with any posts on it afterwards. You can mute the page if you like, if it annoys you when posts pop up. We just need to hit the threshold. We just need the numbers. For 10,000 follows slash likes, you'd be doing us a huge favor. Then Mm -hmm. we can monetize our content. We will not stop asking you until we hit that point. You don't have to interact with the page. Just go follow it. And then we'll leave your alone. Tell your friends and family to do it for you you as well. And... Yeah. Facebook.com forward slash team triple jump. Thank mm. you so much. It's time for a question. 
It's from Stephen Skoda. It's exciting. Yeah, very exciting. A question. Yeah. Stephen says, Hello, Bap. Has there ever been a game where, although you weren't a fan of it, you couldn't help but play it again? Even though I was a fan of the open world in Far Cry 5. Who's phoning me? <laughs> How embarrassing. I got a phone call. Peter Austin, this is a professional podcast. Who is it? It says Northumbria University, and that's what it says when my dentist rings me. Because I think they're based so close to Northumbria University that my phone thinks that Northumbria University, or maybe they're affiliated. Do you want to share it with the class? Do you want to answer? Well, last they rang me about three weeks ago mm. and said, we're going to have to move your, it's just a six month checkup. I go go over six months and I'm going to have to move that. And I was like, okay, no problem. And I rebooked it last week. If they're ringing again to say, sorry, you're going to have to move that, I will be livid. <laughs> Stephen Skodas continues. Yes. Um, <laughs> even though I was a fan of the open world in Far Cry 5, I found the story lacking so much depth with the characters and plot. I've played it a few times since its 2018 release. Uh, I hope you're all having a lovely day. Thank you, Stephen. It's going really well yeah, this morning. Best podcast episode ever. Mm -hmm. I think so. Um, so I've got sort of two answers here. I've got one that is, it's very much relative. Okay. Mm -hmm. So... Spyro 3 and Crash 2, both of both are games that I don't actively dislike them because they're parts of a good trilogy each. Mm. Talking crap about Spyro. Yeah, I'm talking crap about Spyro 3. Yeah, that's How it. Dare you. But Spyro 3 and Crash 2 are both my least favorite in their respective trilogies. And the only reason I play them mm. is because sometimes I feel a bit of a... Uh, you know, a need to like, oh, I'm going to play the Crash trilogy. Mm. You know, I'm just going to do it, whether it's the the remaster or the, oh, sorry, remake or the original, mm. or the same for Spyro. And so I just kind of play those two out of obligation. You know, I'm like, well, I'm going to do that, even though I, if I didn't, oh, I wouldn't man. mind. The, um, the trials and tribulations oh, no. you're putting you yourself really through. Hard it's hard being me. Yeah. Rubbish. Because you could just stop it. Spyro 2. I could. Uh, with Crash 2, with the crash, you have to play it kind of makes sense. Not that it's to get to three, you you to, not there's a lot to kind of keep up with, but yeah, maybe I could stop at Spyro 2. I have done that in the past occasionally, but sometimes. Really? Oh, that makes me really sad. Yeah. I love Spyro Poor 3. Spyro 3. <laughs> I don't, uh, like I say, I don't actively dislike it, but it's my least favorite. I think like some of the levels are a bit Sergeant weird. Birds. And that's what I dislike the most. Well, Sergeant Bird's the best of all the like the side monkey characters. One. Monkey one's kind of annoying. Sheila. Sheila. Sheila, I hate. Is my, you Sheila's hate Sheila. Wow. My least favorite, yeah. Peter Austin. because she's a woman. Hates, kang yeah, hates, <laughs> hates women and kangaroos. And kangaroos. <laughs> and the Yeti's kind of rubbish as well. Oh, Yeti. So. What do you mean? The boxing? You didn't enjoy the boxing? The Yeti boxing? Uh... Well, no, That's I didn't. That's the best but mini what, game. What's his name is also a Yeti, even though he goes up against a Yeti. What's he called? I don't know. You know the one with the club? Oh, oh I, I know the one with the club, know. but yeah, there's a boxing. If I was going to ask anyone, I'd yeti, ask you. You do box a different yeti. Mm. It's been it's been three years since I played the the remake. Yeah, I can't be expected to remember. No, it's well, probably I called Billy or something. I think he's got kind of a sort of a not a, not a posh name, but he's got Herbert. You know, like that gorilla out of Overwatch. What's he called? Winston. Winston. He's oh, got a name right. like that. I think. Let's find out. Okay. Uh, my sort of proper answer, though, is Assassin's Creed Syndicate, which is a game I've talked about from time to time mm -hmm. on this podcast. And the reason being, uh, I really like the setting. I've, I've talked before about how I think that's a really cool period of history, Victorian England, and I'd like to see it more in video games. I want like a Sherlock Holmes third person action RPG to be made. I want like, you know, just just more stuff set in that world. But I don't really like Assassin's Creed games that much. So mm. I sometimes feel a bit of an itch where I'm like, oh, I'm going to go and wander around and explore a pretty well-made Victorian London because mm. that's what they're good at doing, uh, the, the Ubisoft uh, teams that work on Assassin's Creed. But then I, you know, after a, about maybe four or five hours, I'm like, oh, no, screw this. I'm mm. not not playing this. It's Assassin's Creed. What am I doing? <laughs> um, Bentley. 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 That's Bentley, the one. Yes. Yeah, Bentley. Of yeah. course. Ashton. Um, Ashton. Hello. Ashton. Hi. Ashton. Hi. Hi, Ben. What you got? Um, I don't really like the game Sea of Thieves. Mm. I think it's boring. I think it's aimless. <laughs> and I think that oh, no. I I don't enjoy it. When I think I always go in being like, oh yeah, Sea of Thieves. And then I after about 45 minutes, I'm like, oh. Uh, YB really loves now. it, right? YB. YB. Your baby. Oh, no, he doesn't YB. really like it either. Oh, does he? No. I thought you two played it together We quite do a lot. play it together but sometimes. But you both hate not it. Very, not <laughs> very much anymore. Doing? No, so we played it a couple of times. Okay. And then we were like, 
why do we keep playing this? Mm. We we finished playing and we're like, yeah, I'm finished now. That's enough of that. But then we have a lot of friends who really enjoy it. So they'll be like, oh, do you guys want to go play Sea of Thieves for a right. bit? And I'm like, well, I want to sp like spend time with you guys and play a game, but also... I just don't think it's fun. Like it sends you to the same island over and over again, going to like chicken island or snake island chicken. or whatever. And you just end up at the same place over and over again. And it drives me round the bend. But if someone offers me to play it, I'm like, yeah, okay. Maybe it'll be different this I time. Yes, maybe this time you, I'll enjoy it. Um, oh, and also, um, I didn't like it. And now I do like it. Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm. When I first started playing it, I really didn't like it and I wasn't enjoying it, but I was in, kind of engaged in the story, so I wanted to play it. Mm. You wanted to see if Rocket would die because yeah, it's the worst exactly. one. Yeah, um, exactly. And I finished it last night and I really enjoyed it, but it, it did take me like a couple times to be, be like, well, I am actually enjoying this, I mm -hmm. think. Like I, I kept thinking, oh, I'm not really enjoying this. I don't really want to play this anymore. But then I'd go... Oh, I'm just going to play Guardians of the Galaxy tonight because I want to. So yeah, I kept going back to that. And now I like it. So maybe I just conditioned myself to a enjoy it. Ending. A happy ending. Yeah. But I, I like the story. So I think that's why I kept going back. I think if it didn't have a, like, kick off the story well enough in the first couple of hours, I would have just given up. Right. But I enjoyed it. Ben. So uh, Dark Souls 2. I've, I've played that game many times and mm -hmm. started it even more times. But it is just, it's not, it's not, the, it's not a good Dark Souls game. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's just, it's just wrong mm -hmm. in so many ways. And it's got a really weird sort of core group of diehard hardcore fans who will fall on their swords to defend it. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just not as good as the other Dark Souls games or Bloodborne or Sekiro. Definitely not Elden Ring. It's just not as good as Sekiro. You'd rather play Sekiro. I would you? rather. Mm, <laughs> mm, <laughs> I don't think it's. Thing is, I can appreciate. It's one of those things. I can appreciate Sekiro as a very, very good right. game. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just don't like it personally. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the other games that FromSoft has developed since Dark Souls, uh, Demon Souls is better. Yeah, as well. Um, I don't think sorry Dark Souls. It. Sorry, <laughs> just get better taste. Uh, <laughs> Dark Souls Two. I have played it so many times, and in a way, much like you enjoy. Spyro 3 mm. and Crash 2. That's how I feel about Dark Souls 2. I still like it. Yeah. I just don't think it's good mm. compared to the other ones. Um, sorry. It's just your least favorite it's of everyone's the games you least like. Favorite. Apart from those that it's, it's the, not. Apart from the people who love it. <laughs> um, some tangential uh, additions. Wolfenstein Youngblood. Oh, yeah. Didn't, haven't played that multiple times. However, I did persevere with it way beyond the point that I should have done because mm. it's objectively not a good game. Uh, and equally, this doesn't really count, but I have played it several times and it doesn't count because it's one of the best Resident Evil games, Resident Evil 6. Oh yeah. I've played several times um, and I love it. I think it's brilliant. So it doesn't count because you actually like because it. Because it's a good game. Objectively a fantastic but it, game. It counts because other people don't like it. For some right? reason, why don't you like Resident Evil 6? It's brilliant. In terms of games you persevered with as well, mm. you played all the way through Death Stranding. I'm not allowed to talk about Death Stranding. No, <laughs> people get really cross at me. Well, you can't That's see the dislike true, bar though. now, so... Death Stranding is crap. What you like. Sorry. It's rubbish. I don't get it. Mm. And I finished it. You can enjoy it I if you like, but don't tell me it. that my opinion's wrong. Yeah. Because it's an opinion. I can't believe you finished uh, it. I sure did. It's time for what we play. Yes. <laughs> It's what we play in time. Time to talk about what we are playing. playing. Austin. Austin. Talking about games that keep going back to, even though we probably shouldn't. I've not really stopped playing the Grand Theft Auto Definitive Edition all week. Okay. Not okay. in the sense that like I'm, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to get home and play it. But I just mean when I've been like, oh, I'm going to play a game tonight. That one's just there, sort of on my dashboard. And I'm like, I'll play a bit more of that a as well. Comfy pair of slippers. Mm -hmm. yeah, well. Climb on in. Just... Well, they were comfy about 10 years ago. An odd pair of slippers. <laughs> and now they're Different all... Different sizes. I've worn down the foam inside. And, oh, uh, no. But, you know, they're just there. You know, I need I need something to put on them? my feet. And, oh, look, there are my slippers. Put them on. I, I like this metaphor. Enjoy yeah. It. They've Me sort too. of become sandals. Indoor sandals. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Uh, and I think maybe sort of after this week or middle of next week i won't put those slippers on ever again oh no yeah. really um i'm really i feel bad because i think you were really excited and now it's like i, w I was excited 
I've got out of it what I was hoping for, mm. which is fine. So in that sense, yeah, I don't want it to seem like I'm too disappointed because, uh, you know, the quip scope's gone out. And I think I was, um, you know, I I listed all the negatives in that quip scope. And then <clears throat> towards the end, I did try and sort of go, but I mean, I've, I've you know, it's been all right, but I just wouldn't <laughs> recommend it to like anyone really? else. Yeah. Kick my dog. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, never but they mind. had a nice smile. Yeah. Um, Are you planning on streaming it at all? I'll probably do like one session of it, yeah. Right. Um, so what I wanted to get out of it was it, it's just an easy way for me to go back to GTA 3. Although mm. I do have a copy of GTA 3 and a PS2, mm. it's still a bit of a faff to like... I mean, for one thing, I don't think my uh, controller will reach my sofa from where the TV is. Oh, no. We moved all our furniture around recently, and now it's a very long way. So uh, I'd have to sit on the, on the floor, floor to play a PS2 oh, game. Wow, really going back. Yeah, yeah I know. Old school. Uh, or pull up a chair, I suppose. But uh, so, yeah, I was like, oh, it'll be a, a, an easy way for me to play a game that I really liked as a kid. And in that sense, I have genuinely enjoyed revisiting GTA 3. Uh, however, the trilogy as a whole, uh, including GTA 3, just you can just see that it has been uh, in part um, developed, if you can call it that, by AI, like by machine mm. learning, which mm. I don't know if you heard this, but that's that's partly what they did. Yeah, is, that's why yeah, it looks so wonky. It was places. just sort of. They gave it the algorithm or the, this is what you do to these assets to make them into this. And mm. it's like when you press control F, you know, find and replace on a document <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and you try and replace the word, uh, you know, like, uh, and, mm. and every single word with the letters A and D in it gets replaced with an ampersand in the middle. Right. It's that kind of thing. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. you can't bulk do those things. So yeah, not, something I would recommend at all to people who haven't played the originals. If it's going to be your first outing with GTA 3, Vice City or San Andreas, if you're thinking, oh, finally, a chance to play those, don't play the definitive edition. Don't it is to. not definitive. Um, the only definitive part about it is that it contains a load of glitches and stuff from the previous uh, build. Mm. Are you, were you aware of this thing where you wiggle your car and it gets yeah, bigger? I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it on Twitter. But, it I didn't is, know but did you know about it on the old game? Because no, I didn't. No, I, I didn't did not know was that was a thing. thing. But then people were like, "Yeah, this was an old glitch." And I've seen footage of it in the the PS2 version as well. And mm. then they're saying, "And it still exists." It's like the Mafia 2 Definitive Edition all over again, where mm -hmm. all the old game breaking bugs were just brought over. Yeah, they've done nothing but make it run on new hardware, mm -hmm. and that was it. And yeah. you know, overhaul the graphics to make it look like a cartoon. Yeah. Which is, yeah. you know, <laughs> and again, broadly speaking, device. I I don't mind that that choice from a stylistic perspective. But mm -hmm. again, it, in some places, it's just not translated. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's been done by a robot that doesn't know what a human face looks like. So, uh, I have also played a little bit of the Skyrim Anniversary Edition. Mm. We got sent a code for that. Um, We're not doing a quip scope on it. No, don't worry. <laughs> you know what Skyrim is. Well, I was about to say we got sent a code for it. It's just Skyrim. Yeah. Skyrim PS5. Yeah. Right. Skyrim is a good game. Uh, unless you're Ben Potter and you made yourself sick of it. Like he It's you know. as bad as Death Stranding. Whoa. Wow. That's right. No, I, That's a I hot don't take. I don't think that at all. No, Ben just did the just equivalent of eating of, of smoking 80 cigarettes. Your dad's yes. like or getting food you're going poisoning. to smoke them all yeah. now. Getting food poisoning from a food you love and then never. Your reaction to, to it again. is like people's reactions like Sambuca. Uh, yeah, my yeah. reaction to Sambuca as right. well. Yeah. yeah. Amaretto for me. Sambuca, mm. man. Um, <laughs> Skyrim is Sambuca. Skyrim right. is Sambuca. So I, I've enjoyed it in that sense. I love the soundtrack of that game. It is mm. nice mm. to, when you've not played any one of them for a, a, a year or two, it's nice to dip back into Skyrim or Oblivion and just yeah. wander around those wilderness, wildernesses, yeah. uh, wildernesses and enjoy the music. And I, I really like the kind of radiant quests or the, you know, the stuff that kind of, just happens when you're walking along the road and you know, mm. someone comes along and says, I'm being chased or what do you do? Are you try and get, someone tries to mug you and stuff. That's all a lot of fun. So I've enjoyed that in, in that sense. Um, but it's nothing new. It's just Skyrim, as you know it. If you fancy playing Skyrim on, uh, you know, a current gen console, maybe give it a go. When but, do we get Oblivion though? Well, I where's, know. Where's the love for Oblivion? I know that that's probably going to stay locked in the Xbox vault now, but yeah. man, I would love an Oblivion. And I hasten to add as well, I only have this game because we got sent a code for it. I probably wouldn't have bought it because, mm. again, it's just the same game and it's available on so many platforms mm -hmm. now. Yeah. I own it on PS4. I own it on PC. I mean, that, that alone is 
too many. I only need it on one. <laughs> it comes with some Creation Club stuff, I think. As yeah, well. it does Maybe, actually. Like, yeah. So there's some additional content, but it's it's largely. I, I mean, essentially the same thing. Yeah, correct. I'm sure the comments will correct us, but I I think it's probably at least the majority of it is going to be cosmetic stuff, like you know, armor sets and. I thought the loading so times were better as well, which yeah, is no that's surprise. Good. Yeah, that's good. Um, I don't know if I'm just misremembering that, but that's what it seemed like. So uh, mm -hmm. that's what I've been playing, mostly GTA, just Skyrim. Excellent. Ashton. 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 <laughs> what have you been playing? I finished Guardians of the Galaxy last night. So did I. I stayed up way too late. Congratulations. Finishing it. I kept thinking, I'm going to finish it in the next half an hour. And then suddenly it was half past midnight. Oh, no. You know, oh, so dang. I, it. I, really, I enjoyed it. I thought that this... I can't try to say what I think without spoiling it. The final boss, the final, final boss was a bit disappointing. I didn't like that battle very much to be fair. Um, and I thought the bit kind of after you win where you're just walking and celebrating was a bit cringe, but yeah. I was fine with it. No, I, you know, I agree. Um, and, but I enjoyed it. I thought that the story was really good. I liked how it rounded itself out. And um, I like that the, uh, our actions had consequences. Like if you oh managed to... <laughs> oh no. Sorry, Your Ashton, what were you, what were you saying? Your actions have consequences. Look, look what you've um, done. You've I just, you completely anything. put her off. Yeah, I was confused of just, oh, please. Um, yeah, I like that my actions had consequences and that I, there was battles that you were like faced with, but if you'd convince people to like you or help you out, you didn't have to do the battles, which was kind of nice. Um, yeah, I just enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. Um, I've also been playing the Far Cry new DLC, the Vast DLC, Insanity. Um, I played it with MB because you can play it in co-op. And um, it's buggy as heck. Yes! It is way more broken than the actual game itself. Um, but it's, I mean, it's it's a roguelike. Oh, man. <laughs> What are in, they doing? Kind of. Where you're in Vass's memory and if you die, you lose all your stuff and you have to start again. So like if you get guns and stuff, you have to then pay for the guns again. But the money that you've collected, you lose that kind of thing. But it doesn't reset your progress in the story. So you can keep trying the same thing. Mm. Um, it was fun. Like I enjoyed it running around this this new area. Um, you can find like visions and you can find like diary pages and fight. Uh, enemies from Far Cry 3 and stuff or oh, enemies I mean they're they're your like companions in Far Cry 3 but then in this obviously they're your enemies mm. um and it was really good until we basically finished what it needed you to do and then we jumped off the area it told us to jump off and we both landed in the lava died and that was the end of our like we had to start oh, again great yeah. so that sucked um but yeah it, I was playing on his save or like his version of the game. So I couldn't buy any of the guns or upgrade them. So he would have to spend his money to upgrade them. So I had loads of money because I couldn't spend them on anything really. Um, so he kept having to upgrade things and he couldn't, it wouldn't let me do it. Um, I kept being shot by nothing. People kept kind of just uh, popping up in front of you. Like it's really, like it's, I enjoyed it. I'm probably not going to play it again, but for just the first two and a half hours of just, getting through it, it was all right. It was fine. There's like five different difficulty levels. We played it on one. Um, and like with most things, obviously, if you start off with very limited equipment and it gets easier, is the more you find and the more you unlock. Mm. Um, but I couldn't imagine doing it on insanity difficulty or whatever. Um, and I've also been playing, not this week, but I forgot to mention it last week. I played the Resi 4 VR port. Oh, um, okay. Nice. And I really, I thought it was fun. I played through the first like ambush in the village mm -hmm. um, and was, I, I thought it was really good. I think it looks really good. I think that sometimes it's a bit jarring. Like when you're in a cut scene, it just kind of plays in front of you. It doesn't just kind of, uh, you're not yeah. in the cut scene. Um, but then without having to remodel the whole cut scene, that seems like that's fine. Um, have, you, have you played the original? Uh, yeah, I've played, right. I've played the bit I played in the VR. I played in the original, right. like a couple like months ago or something. Oh, okay. um, so yeah, I, I thought it was really fun. Um, I thought it was really satisfying to like have the guns and you have to like load your pistol and pull the cock it or whatever. I don't know. Mm. Cock it and pull it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Off the point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I thought it was really good. And I think that if you're, you've got a VR headset and you like Resident Evil 4, 
then you'll enjoy it. It's not, it didn't give me a headache, even though it's kind of a bit janky graphics because they've not like upscaled them insane amount, but I thought it was really fun. Mm-hmm. So if you enjoy both of those things, I think you'll enjoy Resi 4 VR. Excellent. So yeah, that's what so, I've been playing. So I didn't really look into that when it came out, but I'd be intrigued to see how much of the game is in there like whether they kind of you know cut some corners and remove bits that maybe don't work or whether it's just the full game in vr i think as far as i can tell it's the full game in vr um there is bits where like you know when you push the ladder to stop people coming up the ladder yeah that's not just an animation. That's like a cutscene. So you, it stops, shows you the cutscene of you pushing the ladder down, oh, really? and then you're back into VR again. Right. Right. Um, so there are bits of it where you're like, "Oh, what's going on?" Mm. Um, but it's it's yeah, it's fine. Okay. It's pretty good. Yeah. What have you been playing, Ben? I'll tell you. Uh, I finished Please off Guardians of the Gal. I will. Please tell me. How will you learn? I- How will you learn? I finished off Guardians of the Galaxy mm. finally a couple of days ago and uh, loved it. Agree with everything Ashton said. It was a little bit, a little bit cheese cringe, um, but it still ended up being a fantastic game that I really, mm. really thoroughly enjoyed. Um, I like where it's left, so that there's definitely, you know, scope for a sequel. Yeah. I would be shocked if they already don't have it in production. I don't know how it's performed or sold, but it's just a really good superhero game with some brilliant writing, and I'm, I'm. Both sad and glad that it's over. Glad in the sense that I really did just sort of take so long finishing it that mm. I'm I'm glad I have I have now finished it. Uh, but sad because it was great and I really enjoyed also, it. Also, um, I forgot to mention the voice acting's so good. It is really good. And Everyone in it is fantastic. Yeah, the girl who plays Nikki, who's mm. the kid in it, she's so good. Like there was one point where you're kind of talking to her and she's crying, and I was like, oh. Yeah, I felt really bad. All the performances are great. They're just they're really good. The the person who played Gamora as well is excellent. Mm-hmm. Like all her stuff is good. Even Drax had moments in it that were like emotional, mm. and it was like, oh man. I said when I played the first hour just mm. to get a taster, I much preferred that Drax to movie Drax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good. It's yeah. a really good game, and I think they've got a great cast there. And I hope, I hope we see some of these um, voice actors who perhaps are making their gaming debuts or you know they don't they don't have a huge amount of experience doing video games but have we see them in more stuff because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it'd be so nice to dilute that core diversify it a yeah bit. that yeah. that core group of four voice actors who are in everything it would be so nice to do that mm-hmm. um but yeah loved guardians of the galaxy definitely going to be in my game of the year pick mm-hmm. uh, come the end of the year uh, but we'll get to that uh, i've also played Elden Ring's uh, closed network knitwear vest. Yeah. Um, yeah. The network test. I only had one session with it because it was available for sort of three hour chunks at various times over yeah. the weekend. And I just sat there from the moment it uh, went live until it booted me out and just played it solidly for three hours. There's a full quip scope. Um, there'll also be a list available on the channel. Ten things you need to know about Elden Ring. Uh, it's just it's so good. It. In, James wrote the script for the um, Elden Ring list, and as, as he put it, it could just as easily be called Dark Souls 4 because it just yeah. feels like a very logical next step for that series. Mm. They've Breath of the Wild did it, and I love it. And I couldn't really get into Breath of the Wild, but if you add some sort of Dark Souls flavor to it, little sachet, mm. little sachet of Dark Souls powder, yeah. then <laughs> turns out, actually, I'm super interested. So really happy to play more of that when it when it finally releases and at the same time i'm kind of happy that i only had three hours so i didn't experience too much of it Mm. because i feel like a lot of people maybe spent if you can spend too much time with it if you know what i mean before it's out just sort of lots of people playing with different builds and classes and that's great but i'm quite glad that i only got sort of like a little 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 taste (laughs) little taste so to speak battlefield 2042 played a bit of that that came out uh it's not it is fully out now. Um, I, we were playing an early version. If you bought like the special, uh, like uh, Daddy says I can have my Christmas presents early version, mm-hmm. then you get it two weeks before <laughs> everyone else. Okay. Uh, but we were sent a code by EA, which is very kind of them. It's uh, got a lot of server issues at the moment. I don't know how it's getting on now, but certainly it seems to be divisive amongst the Battlefield community. Yeah. Mm. But it is a good-looking, chaotic massively multiplayer first-person shooter that plays really well 
Um, your mileage with it may vary, but there's again, there's a quip scope if you want to know more about that and see it in action. Uh, what else? Knowledge is power. We love that one. Oh yeah, play a bit of knowledge is knowledge is power. Um, Our weekend on the weekend mm. won it obviously because yeah. I've got the most knowledge. Were um, you hot dog man? I was. I'm always hot dog man. Yeah. He's the best one. He's he the is. Best. At some point, we're going to play Knowledge is Power and the three of us are we going to have, have to fight. fight over who gets to yeah, be Yeah, whoever gets to go in there first. But now it does, it's really annoying that it doesn't work quite as nicely on the PS5. Yeah. Like it looks to PS4 and you have to like signal. change your Wi-Fi yeah. to be one specific for Knowledge is Power. But it is a pain in the ass. I'm glad it still it. works though. Um, I finally played some Far Cry 6 um, and it is, yeah, it's still a, it's something. There was a... Um, and my latest fun thing that we did last night, mm -hmm. the, you know, the little like hovercraft thing, yeah. but the one that can fly, yeah. like, take off, did that. Um, I hopped out, my friend hopped out and then because it was still going and it hadn't fully stopped, it just started taking off on its own <laughs> and it hovered about 10 feet above the ground and we were just looking at it and slowly the engine started to die down. And as soon as the engine like fully stopped, it hung there like a cartoon yeah. for a couple of seconds, then just went. <laughs> and just fell back down to it was the stupidest thing I've ever seen. We, um, um, and that's saying something in Far Cry. It's just it's so much fun. Yeah. Have you found the, the flying way. car? Yeah. The flying car? No. Can't uh, say I found we the were driving car. the flying car and it just it just blew up for no reason. Oh. Like it was just going beep 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 beep. And I was like, why? With no <laughs> nothing's even shooting What's at wrong us. With What's you? going on? And it just blew up. I so. love the planes though, in that you can slow them all the way down by holding down the left trigger and it, you'll like the the propeller will basically stop Your and you just vertical landing. you just float daintily down <laughs> yes. but if you get out before you fully land it tilts slightly and clearly it's coded so that if you t if the nose touches the ground in any capacity you, while you're not up. while you're not flying it it'll just explode so i've died like dozens of times today. great mm -hmm. it's 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 really fun but I would, I, I urge co-op because it's just, you oh, need so, other people around to is. just see this stuff happening. Cause it's, I've really oh, enjoyed it. Bad. I keep finding myself going back to it and just being like, I'm just going to run around aimlessly in Far Cry yeah. for like the I whole think, Sunday. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. I don't think it's very good, but I, I but I'm probably, fun. I'm probably going to finish it because yeah. I'm having fun. Yeah. 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 Little by little. But that's, that's what I've been Question playing. one kind of game. You know, just go back to it. Even I mean, it's, it's very true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Stephen said Far Cry 5. Nice yeah. to know that it's moved on so far <laughs> in Far Cry 6. But that's what I've been playing. It's time for question two now. Whoa. Oh. This comes oh, from. That was weird news. God, we're taking ages. <laughs> <isn't> it? <laughs> it comes from. I was going to stack my papers. Stukalicious. They say, greetings and salutations, Bap. I've just spent my entire Sunday playing Football Manager and it got me wondering, what would be your ideal game to stream for 24 hours and which would be your nightmares? Keep warm now, it's getting colder. And hey, treat yourself to a solid round of high fives. You've earned it, team. Can I have a high five? You're going for a Christmas crack. I thought you were doing some sort of X factor. No, I was just, I'm in the middle, so... <laughs> yeah. Oh, I elbowed the con the controller. Yes, yeah. that's what this is. Isn't it? It's going really well today. Um, I think. I mean, I think all of them would be nightmares. Any game for twenty four hours. Yeah. I yeah. can't really think of a particularly good one. But I thought if I really had to, I'd probably actually play something like Minecraft for twenty four hours. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd play it on survival mode, not creative. I would set myself the challenge of building a big thing, mm. but I'd have to like go and get all the resources. I think that would just keep me busy long enough. Um, if it was creative mode, you would, I would, um, I would run out of steam after about an hour or something. Mm. Um, other than that, something again, something a bit like Skyrim, um, maybe not Skyrim, maybe Oblivion or maybe a Fallout game, but those worlds, you know, there's, there's always going to be something for you to do. You can do some main quest for a bit and then go and do some like faction based stuff and, just see what like little tiny side quests you run into um that would probably keep me relatively sane for 24 hours but i don't know but i think my true nightmare uh would be to play something that i really really like for <laughs> for 24 hours mm. um I, it, it might sambuca it yeah exactly i might get through it easier within the actual 24 hour period if it's something that i enjoy but i think by the very end I would have then like ruined it for myself going forward. Mm. So it's more a preventative measure. It's like, I'm not going to play something that I love because while I might be okay for a day, I won't be when I go back to that game in future or I won't want to go back to that game in future. So, you know, something like, again, Spire of the Dragon or something like that would be the worst thing for me to play for 24 hours, I think. Mm. 
I agree. I don't think mm. there's many games I could just play solidly for 24 hours and not like lose my mind. Uh, Minecraft is probably one of them. And also The Sims, I could probably play for like the, a good part of 24 hours. Mm -hmm. I think that I would run out of steam eventually, but I think that like it's one of those things where there is a couple of different things to do. Like I can spend that like, couple of hours building a house and get kind of lost in it. Like it's suddenly it's like half past 11 at night yeah. and I'm like oops um but yeah I think I could probably play the sim for 24 hours um I don't think well I don't know if I've got someone with me and I can like have someone else with me for the full 24 hours I could probably play Borderlands for 24 hours and just see how far we can get <laughs> um to power through it but if I was on my own probably just the sims or Minecraft or something that's easy to kind of shut your brain off while you're doing it a bit mm -hmm. in terms of like nightmare if i was being forced to play a game for 24 hours and i had no choice uh football manager would definitely well, oh, yeah. be one i mean yeah. oh i categorically do not understand it and i cannot understand why it's fun i understand it and that's worse i think i i know what is going on but i yeah I, I, i've watched like because sometimes i raid the cultolic guys after the stream and they're always playing um football manager and i look and i watch and i'm like what is the fun of this like why are we having a good time why why would did you enjoy it yeah why was it fun because you're in charge and you get to buy the players and sell the players and have a have the good managements and just see your team do well okay all right um and also <laughs> something maybe like hearthstone i think i would just like really hate my life mm. after a while that kind of like card game yeah on situation. balance situation i'd probably rather play a game i really love for 24 hours like spyro than mm. than a game i actively hate i didn't even think of that but yeah yeah some, yeah hearthstone outlast 2 like yeah all in that. i mean you wouldn't oh. get 24 hours out of it you have to go you have around to play again. It again yeah um yeah yeah there's plenty there is a lot of yeah oh outlast 2 absolutely not that would i probably come out like traumatized mm -hmm. um what about you ben i think we've all streamed to the extent where we're just ready for the stream to end be yeah. before the idea of doing a 24 hour stream while palatable if it were for a good reason like for charity yeah the idea of having to stream anything for 24 hours is horrific because after hour especially if you're doing it on your own mm. after hour like three i'd just i'd probably just sort of become a bit non-verbal and just silently play a game like to be on for that long is just i didn't clock the I word just... stream in the question actually that's even worse oh right yeah yeah, yeah. so you're, 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 you you have to be entertaining and engage yeah. with the audience and I've no, seen, I, I can't be doing that me no. and mb streamed on halloween for about 10 11 hours very playing like various games mm -hmm. but we were drinking our way through so oh, it yeah, got drinking. to like 8 p.m and we were like both in a full hazmat suit with like mouse like whiskers on <sighs> They're eating our takeaway that we just ordered drunk. We're playing among us with other people and we were just we were just real winding them up because we we were checked out of the game completely and just mucking around. And they were like, if you're not going to play it properly, why even playing it? And I'm just like, oh, no, it's no. fun, isn't it? Chicken. I mean, I'm eating my donut kebab. Um, so, yeah, I, I just, just the whole principle is a nightmare, regardless of what game's being played. In terms of what's the most palatable game to play out of games that I actually not, like, not just like random games that I would hate to play normally anyway, mm. um... I think playing a Soulsborne game for 24 hours would just about kill me. That's mm. a bit of a nightmare um, <laughs> because I would need a break in, you know, in that game. And there's definitely, you get sort of a sense of diminishing returns on your ability the more you die. Yeah. And as you get tired and you're just dying over and over again, you're going to take more and more stupid risks and you're just going to have a really, really horrible time mm -hmm. on your own. Um, in terms of games that I think would work better, Minecraft, obviously, maybe a narrative game that runs for roughly that duration, like a yeah. Mass Effect or mm. The Last of Us Part Two is about 25 hours. Yeah. Uh, maybe Borderlands, as you said, if it was with multiple people. Uh, but yeah, streaming for 24 hours without a good reason is stupid. What I are you doing? It'd be fun. <laughs> what are you doing? I could do it. I, I mean, do I'd it. do it for charity. I've but I wouldn't. the idea of, of doing it for for yeah as, I as an endurance thing i wouldn't do for it charity. for fun no i wouldn't like hey saturday 24 hour stream time what's wrong with I you i would <laughs> what's wrong with you i have nothing else to do <laughs> <laughs> 
We were talking about this yesterday, actually, on my stream. Um, the guys were saying, like, oh, I need to go to the shop. And they're like, oh, well, let's stream going to the shop. Remember those you know, those streamers who, like, stream their full life? They just stream constantly. Mm, yeah. And I'm like, could you imagine just going about your daily life and just streaming? Because there's quite a lot of, like, there's a couple of female streamers who just walk around with a camera just in front of them and just stream it's and super lucrative talk. i think because it's I'm so like, wow. bonkers yeah. yeah there's a lot of money there to used to be one on my university campus we used to just see her walking around but she used to like walk up and down for like a full hour just up and down this same street because i don't know if she just didn't have anything to do right then or she just didn't want to have to walk home and stream from home so you just walk constantly at least for like an walk hour. around somewhere don't walk up and I down know. the street but that's uh what would you say that was peter i'd say that's a pretty weird thing to do much like this news <laughs> is that what this section's called now yeah <laughs> this news be weird you do It's weird news time. Time for some weird video game news. Peter Austin, what have you got that's weird this week? It's from Nintendo Live. No, wait, sorry. Pro podcast producers. Oh, podcast oh, producers. It. Ben, uh, it's right there Can as you well. hyphenate? Can you hyphenate? I, I, I almost put producers. in brackets, Ben, read this please, out. Please, please do. But I didn't want you to be like, oh... You thought I was going to read it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, I would do that. And yeah. now that you've said it, I will do it. But mm. please do that. Okay. Thank you. We have our wonderful podcast producers, patreon.com oh, forward slash team triple jump. If you support us at a certain tier, you get a podcast producer credit. Here are the podcast producers. Peter, kick us off. Matt Barger. Sean Legg. Trick 24. Evan Breidenbach. G.Y. Goliath. Ellie Nicholas. Hooked Cur 10. Melody A. Bonnet. <laughs> I'm Bonnet. sorry, it's Melody A. Bonnet. Melody Melody L. A. Bonnet. <laughs> Harrison Kalman. Dylan. Gabrielle Philippink. Adam Dawson. And Katie Garrett or Jarrett. Thank you very much, podcast producers. We love you all very much. We love you. We love you. Love you. Peter, what's your weird news? Love you. Bye. <laughs> uh, weird news from uh. Nintendo Life uh, who say... GTA Trilogy contains the infamous hot coffee code that cost take two twenty million dollars. Oh, God's wow. sake! It's written by Damien McFerrin. I know that guy. Do you? I do. In real life, I do, do really? know Damien. Yeah, I know Damien. Yeah. It's fair to say that the launch. I'll be nice then. <laughs> It's fair <laughs> okay. to say that the launch of Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy, Definitive Edition, hasn't gone according to plan. First, many players took issue with some of the alterations made for the remastered games. That's hyperlinked to an article about the visual style and some of the weird models. Oh, boy. Uh, then, Rockstar was forced to remove the PC version of the game to strip out data files that were left in by accident. That's hyperlinked to an article about how some of the songs that they didn't have the license for were in the game, but they'd just been removed, like the actual right, they playing just wouldn't of come them. Up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to make matters worse, buyers are now clamoring for refunds. It would seem that there are other files included in the game that might also be removed at some point, as data miners have discovered that the infamous hot coffee code is still in the game. Although it's worth noting that it doesn't seem like it's possible to actually enable it in the, defini in the definitive edition, which I believe it was in the builds of the game where it had been removed from the original. You could like mod it back. Oh, no, no, it wasn't. But when it was first discovered, it had been modded back into the game. Someone okay. found the files. Right. Um, so there's, there's a series of tweets from a data miner, uh, and they've got a screenshot of some of the code, which uh, mentions a what I think is like a, a model. Yeah, it's like the idea of a model in the game. Um, g girl 3, uh, and it says GFSex underscore 2568. Brilliant. Um, GF being girlfriend, presumably. Oh, I've just closed the entire article. There we go. I've got it or back. Or golf fool. Golf fool sex. <laughs> um, so, um, in case you were unaware, Hot Coffee was a naughty hidden mini game in no. the original 2004 release of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, which contained, ahem, mature content. The game wasn't accessible at launch, but a mod was released for the PC version, which granted access. Following this, it was discovered that the same assets were present in the console versions, and modders quickly enabled it in those versions too. 
GTA has been something of a touchy topic for the mainstream media. It has always been something of a touchy topic for the mainstream media. But Hot Coffee took that frosty relationship to entirely new levels. Rockstar eventually released an updated version of the game with Hot Coffee removed and patched the original release. But it was hit with legal action over the minigame's initial inclusion. Rockstar parent company Take-Two decided to settle a class action suit with the Federal Trade Commission by paying just under $20 million in 2009. Grove Street Games, the company which has handled this new version of the GTA trilogy, has responded to the criticism with its CEO, own, uh, CEO and owner Thomas Williamson saying that updates are on the way. You bloody well hope so, <laughs> yeah. wouldn't you? Um, well, if we just went... Uh, that's how it is. Don't care. Sorry about it. Got your money. Uh, so so not only does the definitive edition include glitches that were present in the original game, mm-hmm. but it also includes content. Admittedly, it's not accessible, but it includes the code for content that cost them $20 million in a lawsuit and was removed in a subsequent build of the game. And yet they've clearly just gone back to the... Source original, code, original, original, original version, not the most updated. Because I, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe they did one or two other bug fixes in that one where they, because you know, you may as well if you're yeah. doing a new version saying we're going to remove hot coffee, you might do like one or two little tweaks as well. Fix the bit where CJ explodes at the end. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, but uh, they've decided to go back to one of the older builds for this uh, remaster, which is. A great decision. I love this remaster narrative. Mm. I think it's so funny. Yeah. Just kind of been watching it unfold on Twitter and I'm just like, wow. Because you know that no one, nothing's really at stake. No. Because Take-Two and Rockstar are, I mean, maybe this developer who's ported it, but Mm. Take-Two and Rockstar are bulletproof. You know, they've got all the money in the world. So no one's really at risk here and you can just kind of laugh at it Mm. consequence free. Yeah, that's true. Weird news, Ashton. I have some weird news. Ashton, what's your weird news? It's from Kotaku, mm-hmm. and it was submitted by at Snowy Boy Yanoi for aka Snowy Boy Yanoi <laughs> on Twitter, um, and it is Animal Crossing players do great and terrible things with the new polish tool. Oh, it's boy. by Mike Fahey. And the thingy bobby, what's it called? Subheading. Yes. It's called Animal Crossing New uh, Horizons polish tool can add sparkles, flames, leaves, evil spirits, and more. Uh, this is a little gif. I thought you might like to see it. Oh, wow. So it's actually pronounced gif. No, it's not. It's not. Oh, no. That's a horrible <laughs> yeah. gif. Um, the item polishing mechanic introducing the excellent Happy Home Paradise DLC for Animal Crossing's New Horizons starts off harmlessly enough, giving players a way to add a bit of sparkle to their home furnishings. But when all of the new features option when all of the new features options are unlocked, including the ability to use custom patterns with different effects, Polish becomes a powerful creative tool that clever players are using to take their creations to the next level. You can say it's setting the New Horizons world on fire. Oh, that's mm. that's really clever. Mm. I see. That's clever. It's very clever because mm. the things have got flames. That's on really them. clever because yeah. the GIF is uh, is on fire. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. clever. That's the clever bit, like it? how it set the world on fire. Do you guys yeah, get it? like the phrase, like in Fallout. What? I what? don't want to set the world on fire. But he does. But he does. Yeah, because of the polish tool. Or at the end of Borderlands 3 where they, this girl is on fire. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's about fire too. Yeah, exactly. Mm, I have a fire at my house. Do you? No, you yeah. don't. No, I don't. I just wanted to sound cool. You had the fire department at your house once. I did. Yeah. Oh my God, same. Is that what he's talking about in the article? He says, one time, Ben from Triple Jump had the fire department at his house. This is a great article because yeah. there was water coming through the light. Yeah. The water department weren't interested. <laughs> no. no. Actually, why did the fire, the fire department came for some water, but, you know. What Electrical not, stuff. Oxymoron. They just came to fill up their tanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, free water, sure. <laughs> um, what was I saying? I, I don't know. know. Something about fire. <laughs> I don't know. That's certainly the case for Redditor Double Dare, who discovered the ability to swap out the polished tool's particle effect for custom patterns last week. All it took was applying the unique design to one of the existing f- effects to create roaring flames. As you know, fire tends to spread, so around the same time, do a... Double Dare set the Animal Crossing home on fire. Uh, Redditor, oh my God, I don't even know how to pronounce that. DBL Rin BW took the combination of taking animals and flaming furniture to the next logical step. There you go. So hey, there, there it is. It's the meme. There. Oh, I thought, made, yeah. You made the meme. It's like the, that, this is it? fine meme um, with the dog. Yeah. Uh, this is all just, just guff. Just bluff. Just bluff. Um, 
There was one other picture though. Oh yeah. Fans using the same flutter flap effect to create flying creatures like bats, birds, and fairies. Others, others are turning steam, ice, and the dark into mysterious gloom swirl effects into spooky characters and spirits just in time for Czech's calendar, Spooks Giving. Want to have a hook? A tub haunted by your favorite villager, apply their photo as a texture to the steam polish effect, like Redditor re recoisted with poor Sherb. So the steam effect of their hot tub is now oh a god. Goat. Oh, wow. Um, Spooky. That's a cool effect. I like the yeah. creativity. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Players are discovering cool new ways to apply their custom designs to the polish tool every day. So stay tuned to Reddit and Twitter to see whatever Animal Crossing New Horizons fans do in the next couple weeks. Ooh. All right, I will. There we are. Yeah, I suppose I will then. You just watch me. My weird news comes from PC Gamer and Tyler Wilde. Whoa. The headline is, Battlefield 2042 players are joining XP farming servers only to discover that they're the crops. <gasps> oh my God. Uh, so <laughs> since it has been patched and uh, XP has been disabled from custom Battlefield portal servers, just so you know. Original story. Battlefield Portal is a tool for creating, hosting, and discovering custom game modes in Battlefield 2042. You can make silly stuff like 1 vs 64, or knives only modes, or, com or complex deathmatch variants, or classic Battlefield throwbacks. Or you can do what everyone uh, who's currently hogging all the portal server capacity is doing, and make XP farming modes. It's frustrating to see a potentially cool custom server tool dominated by bot matches designed for grinding XP, but while investigating the issue, I discovered that a beautiful thing is happening. Players are joining XP farming servers hoping to rack up attachment unlocks, but are instead discovering that they're the XP being farmed. Mm. <laughs> XP farming servers are often set up with a small human team fighting a big team of bots who are, who are cursed to spawn with a sliver of health each. To give you a sense of what that looks like, there's a gif below, and basically he's just mowing down. He's just spawn camping, basically, and every time a bot spawns, he's just killing it immediately. Right. Right. Sounds fun. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> After that PvE massacre, I started joining servers explicitly labeled as XP farming servers to try to find out how much XP players are actually getting from this. Dice tweeted earlier that it deployed a change to Battlefield Portal that impacts the effectiveness of XP farming servers, so presumably it's not a lot. I'm not sure yet, though, because I'm always the one being farmed. Most of these farming servers are set up so that players can keep joining even after the small team intended for humans is full. That puts most players on the big bot team, weaponless fodder for the XP farmers, who I'm sure are delighted to have human targets to join the AI horde. Mm -hmm. What's really funny is that not everyone <coughs> leaves after discovering that only a handful of players in the server are XP farming and they aren't one of them. I've stuck around and watched players desperately run at their tormentors with knives over and over. Somewhere along the line, a rumor must have started that typing forward slash switch or forward slash swap team <laughs> into chat puts you on the other team because there's a lot of that. It does not work. Uh, I've also seen strings of players type forward slash gun, apparently hoping <laughs> <laughs> that the command will give them a gun. Forward slash XP. It does not. <laughs> Gamers are like those fish that smush their mouths against the side of aquariums to suck up algae, but for XP. We just love XP, and if we think we've found a mode where we can easily vacuum it into our tubular stomachs, <laughs> we'll attach our faces to that mode and refuse to leave. It goes on, but it's been patched now. Um, so, yeah, players were, were joining XP farming servers and just being killed over and over Ford again. Forward slash gun is, is very who, funny. <laughs> who were actually farming. So there we are. There's some weird news for you. What would you forward slash in real life? Uh, what would slash sandwich? Burger. <laughs> yeah, food. Forward slash the sweet embrace of death. <laughs> oh, that's a bit. That's too many words. Yeah, it forward is. slash yeah. death with underscores. underscores. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The sweet. Would you want to put some numbers in there as well to be extra edgy? Yeah. Well, uh, threes all, all of the E's are threes. Yeah. yeah. Fours instead of A's. Mm. Beautiful. Um, <laughs> That's probably a me question, isn't it? It's highlighted in black, yes. as they all are, because we've still not fixed our printer. <laughs> it's but. fine. It's going well. Samuel Benson has asked a question, Pencil. and the question is as follows. Hello, BAP. Hello, Samuel Benson. Hello, Samuel Benson. In a recent convo with my father, 55, it's a funny name, he <laughs> mentioned that he wants to try out narrative-focused <laughs> <up>. video <laughs> games. <laughs> He's never really played any games like that. Narrative focused video games. Any recommendations for great narrative games for a newcomer? Thank you, Samuel. Thank you, Samuel Benson. And your father. You drive me around the bend, Austin. Mm -hmm. Mr. 55. Mr. Sounds like 55. a rapper. Mr. Yeah, Worldwide. Mr. 55. 55 cent. <laughs> <laughs> um, I give your answer. 
would suggest maybe beginning with walking sims. Mm. If your father is, um, you know, not... I mean, it says he he mentioned he wants to try narrative-focused video games. Perhaps it's better, for those of you listening at home, if you think that, like, a parent or a friend or someone would like narrative-focused video games, but they might be a bit cynical and think that video gaming is just typing slash gun and <laughs> shooting other people then, you know, a walking mm-hmm. sim might be the best way to go about it because they can appreciate that video games can be art and they can have interesting narratives mm-hmm. without actually having to do too much. Um, walking sim was, I think for a time, it was a bit of a derogatory mm. kind of it's reductive. Sort of, it's been reclaimed, isn't it? Yeah, I think people just use it now and they mean it and it, it's it's fine, it's good. Um, outside of that, though, I'd be tempted to say that I think Uncharted is quite a, a a good series of games with a narrative and a set of characters that you can get along with. But it's probably not great for newcomers, especially if you start with Uncharted 1, which is actually quite gun heavy. Mm. Um, if your dad wasn't that bothered about knowing exactly uh, the history, then maybe, you know, A Thief's End could be, could be a, a reasonable start. It does take, you know, some some gaming ability, but I just think it's a very nice, you know, I don't want to suggest something like The Last of Us, for example, mm. which gameplay-wise is probably a bit more straightforward than it's Uncharted. Might be no, that would be a terrible suggestion. <laughs> that would be a terrible <laughs> suggestion. <laughs> which gameplay-wise is far more straightforward than, than Uncharted. I don't know what that was. Was that in the bathroom? Hello. Oh, yeah, it probably oh, no, was. I thought it was that big screw that fell out from me. Uh, there's there's a giant there. screw down there from behind the TV. It's probably really important. I think it was on the other side of the wall. Can I have that a look noise. At that? Yes, you can. That is massive, it's isn't it? It is big, isn't it? It, it doesn't have any like dust on it. Sorry, Peter. Continue. No, it's well. I was just uh, going to say. Uh, I think that yeah, The Last of Us is easier to play than Uncharted. I think for a newer player, I would argue. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think there's less less going on at times, uh, but. I think it's just a bit, it's a bit much, isn't it? I don't know. Maybe your dad's, you know, survival fine horror might that. be hard to play. Yeah, reaction times wise, Ashton. Well, anyway, Ashton, what do you suggest? <laughs> um, not the Last of Us. No, Last of Part Two. Yeah, no, not that one. Um, I last Christmas gave my dad a PlayStation Four and a couple of games, oh. and because he came to our house and he was like really loving playing Watch Dogs. And he was saying, oh, he always goes around his friend's house and he plays on their PlayStation <laughs> <old> 63. <laughs> um, and so I was like, okay, fine. I'll I'll give him the PlayStation that we're getting rid of. Um, and I gave him it and I gave him Spider-Man and I gave him an oh. Assassin's Creed. And um, then he just didn't play either of those, bought himself a golf game and basically just spends all of his time building golf courses and playing on them with his friends. Oh, that sounds um, nice. Which is kind of cute. I mean, every time I go around, I'm like, have you played this? He's like, no, but I built a new golf course. <laughs> sorry, I just, I just kicked, kicked you. Me. I'm sorry. There's not a lot of room under this table. Hmm. Um, but in terms of your dad, Samuel, I would suggest games that are kind of linear, that you're not open world games. Yeah. They're too much for, I think, most people, let alone someone who's new to gaming. Um, so I thought like the new Tomb Raider trilogy would be quite fun because Lara Croft's a character that most people know of, even if they haven't played video games. Um, and those are quite kind of, they start you off very basic and they like teach you things as you go. Um, so I thought that could be quite a good shout. Or depending on what your dad's into, probably maybe not the topic of Life is Strange, but games like Life is Strange, but it's not you know, you've got the choice choices to make. It's not kind of fast action too much. Um, maybe it would be quite fun. Or if you just like colorful games, Ratchet and Clank's quite fun mm-hmm. and shooty and kind of not basic, but, you know, you shoot at something, it dies, you do a puzzle and then you get through to the next area. So that's kind of easy enough to pick up and teach you the basics as well. So I thought those games would be quite good. Uh, I didn't say The Last of Us. But uh, apparently that was a bad suggestion. So. <laughs> I've thought of a good one, actually, that I should have said. Uh, you should play a game with your dad. I was going to say, yeah. You co-op. should play It Takes Two. Mm. I think that's probably relatively easy to pick I up, but actually that. has enough about it that it feels like you're playing a quote-unquote proper game. And yeah. it kind of has a lot of different aspects from a bunch of different games. Yeah. Like there is like shooting elements. Yeah, that's what stuff, I mean, really. So. Or a way out. 
a way yeah, out. A way yeah, a way out. Yeah. 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 Work as well. I was going to say, if you if you want to play something together, it's probably a, another good shout to teach him how to play games with you. It's mm. always kind of fun. Nice bonding experience for you and your dad. Mm. Yeah. Aged 55. Yeah. Ben, what would you suggest? I think the real hurdle, especially if he's never played games before or isn't really accustomed to playing games, is going to be getting him used to using a controller. Mm-hmm. Two sticks. Uh, anything, Very difficult. Mm-hmm. Yeah, two sticks. Controlling the camera is some is is a... It's a concept that's very hard to explain to someone who's never played mm-hmm. games before or isn't very familiar with them. Um, it's th- There's a muscle memory that you build up that you definitely take for granted. Mm, yeah. And so anything that requires reaction times is going to be a challenge, I think, probably. Mm-hmm. So if he's after narrative games, perhaps it might be best to start him off super soft with a Telltale game of some kind. Um, you know, there's plenty mm. of really good ones and not always is he going to be required to react very fast. And if he is, there's probably a character's life at stake and he'll learn pretty <laughs> fast that he's got to <laughs> he's got to press that circle button or that B button fire. or, you know, pay attention. <laughs> um, but yeah, alternatively, because this is what um, like my sister played some games growing up but never never really and she's recently gotten super into persona in like the past few years and your fiance played persona 5 as well say yeah she's so not not a fan of uh using two sticks to control a character and a camera Mm. but the bit with the combat being turn-based yeah you don't have to worry about being good with your two sticks in the middle of in the heat of combat. No. Mm. So that's only when you're exploring and you've got There's all the no time in the world. There. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So while 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 a slice of teenage Japanese <laughs> demon life might not uh, appeal to your dad necessarily, certainly turn-based games might be an avenue to explore as well. Mm-hmm. Something that takes the time pressure off reacting to stuff. Uh, but there we are. You know, maybe you give those a go. See how you follow up. That's a really good answer, Ben. Thank you, Ashton. What about the last of us? It's time to move on to uh, a ginormous chat, as we call it. Mm. Uh, That's what's known. Great as. big bushy, bushy discussion. discussion. <laughs> It's big discussion time, time for the big discussion. This week's big discussion comes courtesy of a small pottle of cream. Pottle. Is that right? That's what it's, yeah, that's their Pottle, not bottle. No, pottle. I like that word. A small pottle of cream. small pottle of cream. When did you get a bottle of cream? What? When was the last time you had a bottle of cream? All right, Ashton. When was the last time you had a pottle of cream? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good point. What's, it's a pot. Is there, but pottle isn't a real pot. Is a word. <laughs> don't don't, don't, don't argue with me like I'm insane. <laughs> what are you talking about? I didn't make the name up. I the didn't say you name. did. You said when was the last time I had a bottle of cream? Like that was weird. They ask, "Hello, Bap. <laughs> with GTA Definitive Edition coming out and sadly appearing to be just a quick cash grab, do you think remasters are becoming oversaturated now?" Don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, thanks for listening, everybody. And that's the end of the big discussion. I don't. I don't feel like this ha- has kind of had any significant effect one way or the other. I think people. Some people already thought that there are too many um, remasters. Some people, are, you know, will be willing to let go any individual crime and say, yeah, but remasters broadly can be good. So I don't think GTA Definitive itself is going to be some sort of nail in the coffin uh, for remasters or that we need to reevaluate. I think it, I guess partly because of what you were saying, Ben, how Rockstar can just kind of do what they want. Shrug it off. Yeah, I mm. think in, in the same way that they can shrug it off, I think a bad GTA coming out, I think just the industry itself can sh- shrug it off or the, the, the whole mm. remaster sphere can go... Or whatever it's just it's just a, another bad one but i think if anything it shows at least the lead up to this game it shows that there's still a demand for that and that's at the end of the day it's a business isn't it the video games industry is about making money it's about supply and demand and if people before the game came out were thinking oh that's really good i'd like the opportunity to go back and play those games and maybe you know they've got a lick of pain then that shows that the demand for remasters is alive and well um, 
And uh, I, I think people are far too quick to forget the bad times that they've had, the bad examples of certain genres. And when the next one's announced, when, you know, THQ Nordic say, hey, we're, we're bringing out um, Time Splitters, all three of them remastered, people will just jump on that. And I'm fine with that personally. I think I wish that more care would go into these, but mm. that's a different question. Mm. Um, but in terms of whether they just should or shouldn't exist, whether we should stop doing remasters, I don't think necessarily we should. I think they just need to like not get a goddamn, I nearly swore, goddamn robot to do it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Ashton. I think, thank you. I think that um, the concept of a remaster is so vague and broad nowadays because you can have the Spyro trilogy, which is technically a remaster. I said that's a name. remake. Yeah. But isn't it called Spyro? It's reignited, isn't it? Yeah. But when I typed in remasters, it came up. I think there's confusion. Well, because there this is, is the thing, because remakes and remasters are. are very much very similar. But you can, when I, I typed in remasters to just be like, what other bad ones are there? What what ones can I see that I go, that was pretty bad? Hmm. And there was Mafia. like about <laughs> 70 just like on the list of like the ones at the top of Google. Mm. And then it was like, see more. And I was like, I don't need to see more. This yeah. is enough. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're used interchangeably and they, they shouldn't be really because they are different things. But yeah, a lot but of the standard, the, the casual consumer would yeah, not, just kind of not yeah, know Yeah, exactly. Because I think when you've got a remaster like the GTA trilogy and then you've got remasters like you know, The Last of Us, which is only remastered from a couple years ago. Like it didn't have a lot of build up, but it, you know, a lot of time to kind of mm. age, mm. but it's still remastered and they needed to do it because it meant that new players could play it or people who didn't like the old games because they were too old had this new branch into it. And then things like Resident Evil, because they were remakes, weren't they? Yeah. Yes, three and two. Yeah. Were, yeah. But then Mass Effect was a remaster, remaster. Yeah. wasn't it? So this is the thing, that there's so broad scope of like what could and couldn't be a remaster like mass effect didn't necessarily change the graphics other than hdifying it um but yeah they changed some of the gameplay aspects to make it easy uh to play gta 3 just didn't really do anything they mm -hmm. just made it look a bit different they added a weapon wheel added a weapon some wheel control changes which had a typo on one of the controller layouts apparently yeah <laughs> but like two things Excellent. were assigned to r2 or something i can't remember oh, good. good and one of them was one of the buttons was Fixed blank. Game. Mm. Yeah. Damn, can't do it. It's already fire. But yeah, I think there is an, an obscene amount of remasters currently kind of in the works or have been released in the last couple of years. Um, but I also think that it's not necessarily a bad thing. There's games that I have never played and probably wouldn't bother playing that I am like Spyro. I would have not bothered playing because I just couldn't. I just didn't like it. It was too old for me. And then the remasters came out and I played them. Um, remakes. So remakes mm. came out. Reignited Trilogy came out. And I played them because they were in front of me. They were pretty. They were like on did the you new like three, console. Though? I think I did like three. Yeah, we yeah. all like three, Three's don't we? really yeah. good. <laughs> and actually in the Reignited Trilogy, three was objectively the worst because it was made by someone else. And was it? Talk, well, Toys for Bob oversaw it but a different studio worked on oh, that i didn't know that uh, and yeah. it was way glitchier oh like, yeah i think i did if you know listed that. the bugs there were way more for spyro 3 oh that's a shame um but i think yeah i don't think there's anything wrong with being remastered in terms of most games but does every game need a remaster no it does not no, no it does not and i think that's where the the issue is that if a, if a company is like oh damn i don't want to make a new game what if we just remade this one that like some people like, but not pull off in? We could just remake this and just sell it again for 60 quid mm. and people will buy it. And then they do and we we buy it and it's trash or it's decent. And then we move on to the next thing and we buy the next remaster that's again trash. And we just go, oh, well, maybe the next one will be okay. Like mm. you were saying, the next thing will come out that we're really excited for. And we'll just buy it because it's a blast from the past. And a lot of people will be like, oh, I've never played that game. Never got the opportunity. I'll play it now, like with GTA Trilogy. So, yeah, there's loads of remasters. But whether they, I think they should stop or they should kind of calm down a bit, I don't know. Depends on the game, doesn't it? Yeah. I think there's a, obviously, there is a difference between remasters and remakes. Mm. Um, I'd argue that 
there might be a case to be made for there being too many remakes in production, although personally I don't feel that way. Remasters, though, just remaster everything. I don't care. Mm. Mm. Like, it, it, as you say, Ashton, it's so frequent that there's so little done to them that they are, they're just ports. Yeah. That, what's, what's really the harm? Like, you, you spoke about The Last of Us, which was literally just a port to yeah. PS4. Of course, it looked a bit better, but it, would, it was just a port. It that's how I played it. It wasn't a remaster. Yeah, time, that's the only time I've well. played it. Yeah. So I think remasters aren't really a problem or like a force for evil. Again, as you said, Ashton, there are certainly some remasters that I would raise an eyebrow at, like <clears throat> Dark Siders, Darksiders War Mastered Edition. Oh, yeah, mm. War Mastered Edition. Yeah. Or even more recently, Kingdoms of Amala, which does have a following and people like, but it wasn't a good remaster, and I wasn't particularly asked by it at all. Mm. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't hurt me that they exist, and I don't no. think it's necessarily uh, negatively impacting the games industry by having them around. And if any games deserved a remaster, it's a flipping GTA trilogy. It's three Vice City and San Andreas. It certainly deserved one, yeah. It's such a shame <laughs> that they were rubbish. Mm. But, you know, if it's no it's no uh, Darksiders War Mastered Edition. You know, like there, there is a reason for these games truly to have a remaster. Yeah. Um, but again, them being rubbish doesn't necessarily mean anything bad for remasters as as a whole mm. uh, my only concern would be that we might reach a point where studios are exclusively working on remaking if we're talking about remakes or remastering if we're talking about porting their earlier stuff mm. to the extent that we're stuck in some never-ending cycle of the same basically a studio making games for 10 years, new games for 10 years, and then spending the rest of eternity <laughs> re-releasing yeah. And then by the time they've remade the next one, they have to remake the first one that they made because it's, it's run because out Because it's time. been 10 years. Yeah, it's time for the anniversary edition yeah. well, of the I remaster. Think, I still think, although the new style Lara Croft is very popular and those games are, you know, they're doing well enough up on their own. Yeah. Um, I still don't, I, I think it's, uh, I won't be surprised if, a remaster or remake of the original games, maybe the original trilogy, happens at some point. And that's already been done with Tomb Raider Anniversary. That was a remake mm -hmm. uh, of the first game onto PS2 and perhaps other platforms as well. I had on PS2. Uh, and that was a really good game. But, you know, that's already happened. And if, you know, in time, Square attempted to are, are tempted to, you know, make a bit of easy money by releasing a remastered trilogy of those... That's already a, a case of the the loop starting to happen. Wasn't the first one on PS3 and Xbox 360 anyway, um, and then it was ported to PS4 and Xbox One. I maybe misremembering. I'm not sure what the timeline. You mean the first are. one of the, the new, first one of the new trilogy? The new okay. trilogy. I think it, it, well, I think it, may it started. Have been. I think it, yeah. Uh, and then so it was it's already kind of happened. PS4. So they'd be remastering a remaster if they released it again. Well, yeah, but what I mean is like, so the PS1. The, oh, the OG. Well, the, the original. Yeah, the original. Yeah. Yeah. original okay, that's gotcha. what I'm saying. So I think yeah. the the they could make some easy money by doing a trilogy of the yeah. PS1 games, mm -hmm. either remastered or even maybe even remade. Yeah. And the first one's already been remade once yes. on like the 10 year anniversary. So, or maybe it was 20? I don't know what it no, was. No, PS2 would have been 10 Yeah, years. no, yeah, mm -hmm. 10 years it must have been. It was, wasn't it 25 like last year? And Well, yeah, well, yeah they did some sort of celebration for that. See, yeah, when, we're, when, we're, so when we're falling over ourselves trying to understand what, what we're what talking, talking about, about, I can kind of see what you mean <laughs> in terms of is there oversaturation. <laughs> However, my doomsday scenario of developers only ever existing to remake games they made 20 years ago, I don't think that's going to happen, mm. especially as long as backwards compatibility in, um, increases in its um, effectiveness and use across the industry. Sony, Nintendo, please step it up. Um, and also, you know, these clearly, for better or worse, mostly worse, the, the original developers of these games are not the ones working on the remasters. Mm. It's yeah. other studios. So those studios can continue to work on new games. Um, but, for instance, you know, there's all sorts of factors. And as you said, Peter, the quality of these remasters isn't isn't in, in question currently. That's not what we're talking about. Um, but, like, the games take so long and so much money to make these days that if you're wanting a new GTA, you are going to have to wait, what is it, eight years now mm -hmm. since mm -hmm. since GTA V originally released? 
we're waiting longer and longer. So a little nostalgia injection, the ability to replay some of these older games is welcome. Well, and even, even if the execution is horrible. Mm. Well, I was going to say, but, you know, depending on what period of gaming history you are taking your remaster from, mm. if you take three GTA games, I know they were some of the earliest true open world games as we know them now. So they weren't vast, but that's still three games with a whole load of just buildings and models and vehicles, each with their own physics and, uh, you know, textures on every surface. All of that needs doing by someone. Mm. So, uh, again, you need to either wait uh, or uh, allow these things to have the the time that they're that they require to be done to a decent standard, or you have to not be that surprised if something like that is churned out relatively quickly. I don't know how long they worked on that trilogy, but I wouldn't think very long <laughs> not a based on time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if they spent longer on it, it would have been much better. Yeah. So if you are taking a game from far enough along in gaming history. It's actually going to take a fair amount of resources just to remaster that in I mean, and of Final itself. Final Fantasy VII is releasing in parts because they just couldn't. But the, the game is so massive. And to that remake that to entirely. To remake that entirely yeah. is going is to obviously takes a long time. This is this is the problem again. So. We're getting into a remakes versus remasters discussion in terms of what's easiest. Um, certainly, you know, in terms of a remaster, Final Fantasy VII already had a PS4 release. Mm -hmm. uh, that was technically the remaster because it had trophies and you could use cheats and fast forward. Lots of, you know, the the core game wasn't changed, mm. but it was just sort of playable. It was a port with mm -hmm. trophies. The same. With several, in fact, all three of those GTA games were available on PS4. Yeah, they were, yeah. Uh, with trophy support. They've now been delisted because they want you to buy this instead. So I suppose, mm. like, in the case of Square Enix with Final Fantasy VII, the remaster, and Final Fantasy VII, the remake, remake, I think those can coexist because the original version is there and here's the new updated version that we've rebuilt from the ground up. Mm. Rockstar, though, I think have a lot more to answer for when they already re-released these games onto a platform and then took them down and then tried to sell you another version that they just tuned up a bit yeah. because both of those are remasters i think companies are responsible for perhaps just picking a direction and sticking with it mm. so while square enix can have a remaster and a remake i do think rockstar should have some criticism leveled at it for trying to do two remasters essentially yeah mm. even though the other ones weren't really remasters. They just had trophy support. But you know what I mean? Yeah. It's confusing to consumers and it's unnecessary. Just pick a lane, like remake it, remaster it, but don't remaster it twice on yeah. the same platform. That's weird. What and do you decide doing? how it is that you want to remaster it. You know, if it purely been just uh, HD textures, sometimes that's all a remaster is. It's purely textures. They don't change the models at all. Mm -hmm. With GTA, they change the models and arguably, it's one of the worst things they could have done. <laughs> also, some of the physics is different. I've seen side by side, and they're saying this car behaves differently. So I don't know how that's happened uh, when clearly they've used an actual build and, and you know built from that in a true mm. remaster style. Yeah. So you know, there's a whole argument about the manner and the degree to which you remaster a game as well, which you know that that's got a factor in, a factor into it. But I still think Rockstar fully just swindled everyone with the, how it, mm. how they have like advertised it what three weeks two weeks before it was released and was like mm. wow we're making guys just so you know we're making this get excited pre-order it now two days later a trailer they're like they picked all the good bits and made mm. it look decent and then two weeks let everyone pre-order it everyone buy it and then it's trash like it was I'd such a quick turnaround it was actually in development i think we'll I, hear more about yeah. this I, but I, it's I'm, just... I'm sure jason schreier is already emailing people and talking yeah. people off the record yeah um yeah it's 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 mad i mean and yeah. we're not the biggest outlet in the world but we were just completely blanked when we asked for a code twice and yeah. i was i was very like code Oh yes, we'll have more. We'll, the the game should be active on this date, okay. right? Okay, but do we ask you for code? No response. So I don't know. I'm sure other outlets got code because they're much bigger than us. But I don't know if that perhaps also is, you know, in, uh, indicative of the fact that they didn't I don't think really anyone want got people a pre 
like, pre release. It was sort of like day of. It was of. like day yeah. of, I think. I didn't see any like gameplay before. They knew. They knew what they of. were they knew what they were doing. It's, Apart from when PlayStation accidentally released it the day early. Yeah, well they released it at midnight, didn't they? Yeah. And then Rockstar got mad because people got early access to this. Trash. This PS2 Trash game, <laughs> yeah, it's it's nuts. Like this, this whole thing has been a disaster, and it's been entertaining to watch it all unfold. But in mm. terms of the wider remaster, not remake, remaster culture in the video games industry, I don't think it's anything necessarily to worry about. It just gives newer players a chance to experience older yeah. games and us young folk, and older you young folk, and older folks the chance to re-experience their childhood classics or they, their youthful classics that mm -hmm. they love so much about. There we yeah. are. Of course, let us know what you think about uh, GTA Definitive Edition and remasters as a whole or remakes, or if you don't know the difference, both um, and everything else we've talked about this week. Peter, where can people find us on the internet and get involved? YouTube.com and twitch.tv forward slash Team Triple Jump is where we put out our streams uh, on both and also videos, of course, over on YouTube, including those quipscopes and all sorts of other things too. Mm -hmm. When we are streaming on both of those channels, we are modded by Lob Rotovich, Trowling Badger, and Mr. Black. Uh, hey, have you got Amazon Prime? Did no. you know? Never mind. I don't either. I do. Did you know, Peter, yes, that uh, you get a, a Twitch sub as part of that? Oh, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, you can spend it on uh, Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Team Triple Jump. It won't cost you anything extra. Okay, I'll do that. Thanks. Okay, twitter.com and facebook.com. Oh, that guy sounds like a dick. Yeah. Forward slash Team Triple Jump <laughs> for our social media presence. We have video and live stream announcements and a few other things over on Twitter. And Facebook has legacy video content, occasional Facebook lives where we talk to you via the internet in real time um and go follow it phrase and go follow it please mm -hmm. and fraser is looking after both of our social medias for us thank you fraser uh, patreon.com forward slash team triple jump is where you can go for our patreon tiers lots of different rewards available have a look at them please we have a website please. uh triple jerk dot mup that's triple j u dot m p it's a really cool website you should check out. If you want to join our Discord, you can go to triplejet.map forward slash Discord and hang out with all of our amazing community. They're really nice. And we're modded on Discord by Jack, Joe, Tori, and Hollowwise. Eyes. And if they tell you to do something, do it! Um, if you want to listen to our podcast in an audio form, maybe you're going swimming and you've got some waterproof headphones and you want to hang out. Say, um, you can You can listen to our podcast at triplejet.map forward slash podcast um if i know well you can listen to it on all of the platforms there um if you miss one of our live streams we do a lot of live streams ben i'll tell you about it in a minute yeah. um you can w watch all these live stream vods at triple jet dot mark forward slash vods and last but not least we have a shop where you can buy some sick and cool merch we can get this hoodie wow this t-shirt Wow, and other amazing merchies at triplejumpshop.com. New merchies soon. Mm. Indeed, and if you want to find out about the new merch that's coming out soon, go to the Triple Jump Shop on Twitter, and it will be on there. And also tweet us if you've got merch. We like to see the pictures of you pictures guys of you and rocking your photos. it. And there's photos of merch yeah, and stuff. Yeah, a little bit. Like to see it. If you'd like to follow Peter and Ashton on Twitter and Instagram, you can at that Peter Austin and at Scrambled Ashton and myself just on Twitter at confused underscore dude. We do lists every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. <laughs> Streams every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Thursday being the joint stream on YouTube. Blaze it. Monday to Friday. The other days uh, being solo streams on Twitch. Worst games ever is fortnightly. Friday for patrons of a certain tier. Sunday for everyone else. Podcast is every Saturday. We do shows all the time. It's good. Just Loads. go subscribe. Just go flip and subscribe. Loads of them. Why not leave a review on iTunes or your platform of choice? It helps to do with something oh, algor, course, something perhaps. rhythms. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash Team Triple Jump. Go follow us. Please, 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 please. The tat appeal is over. It's done. We have a mountain of tat. You've been absolutely incredible. We will be hanging on just for a little while longer for any stragglers to arrive, but please don't send anything now. It is too late. There is That's so the alarm. much tat. Alarm. I'm so, much. so excited it's gonna to be amazing. open it. If anything is received late after the video has been recorded, we will obviously open it, but it may not appear on, on camera. Don't expect it to be on camera, I'm afraid. 
um, we we tried to. I mean, we gave you a very clear deadline, yeah. and uh, I know sometimes it's not your fault if no. things get held up. Mm. But uh, yes, just be aware that that may be. The it case. will still get to us. It will still get to us, and we will still thank you if you ask us. And you know, it did get here. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, naturally. Uh, well, let's, we got oh, quip scopes, quip scopes galore. Oh. Elden Ring. Battlefield 2012 is written here. Oh, That's not 2042. Sorry, <laughs> Halo's multiplayer. GTA Definitive Edition. Peter, you had a chat with James about something as well. Oh, yeah, indeed. Uh, James <laughs> has been uh, playing with an Evercade versus. Oh, yeah, indeed. Oh, yes, indeed. indeed. James Jenkins, my fellow man, has played with uh, an Evercade vs or versus um uh, at home it's got multiplayer functionality it's like the evercade that i talked about mm. but better yeah retro mm. system you can put cartridges in it and they're like officially licensed collections of classic games mm -hmm. and uh it yeah it's just cool the home console too. version of the portable one this about. one it was 720p the handheld the, 1080p to that. Yeah. and that's releasing very soon uh, so if you're mm. interested in your retro games, go check out that discussion all so about it. So that's a it. nice t-shirt as well. And I have been rocking out that t-shirt. Rocking out In it. My, my gym jams. Yeah. Rocking out the t-shirt. Mm. Uh, there's a new episode of Main Menu. Very exciting. We're back in the kitchen, this time cooking up something from Spider-Man, Marvel's Spider-Man. There was a dumpling recipe and oh boy, didn't we do well. So well, go watch the videos. Really good. It only gets worse next month. So. It's a fantastic video. Oh, next, but, uh, next month we didn't cook well. A sin, a real <laughs> sin. We've already recorded <laughs> our Christmas episode of Main Menu. Look forward to it. It's incredible. And finally, I think one of the riskiest videos we've ever <laughs> tried to put on YouTube it's the new episode of Weirdest Games Ever. It's out for, well, it was out for patrons of a certain tier last week, mm -hmm. uh, but it's out for everybody else tomorrow at the time of release on Sunday. We had a fun thing happen where we uploaded it in very good time because YouTube will tell you, even if it's like private on the back end of YouTube, it will say like, no, we've identified a bad thing here. So we like to give it a bit of space. Uh, it was fine. It was all ready to go. And so uh, a few days ago, I just applied the thumbnail to it. I was doing all the all the title and description and stuff, put the thumbnail on. And then suddenly it was like, no, <laughs> no, you cannot put ads on this. It's bad. And I was like, oh, what what's caused that? So then I like undid all of that, took the thumbnail off. And suddenly it just switched back to it's OK. <laughs> I didn't like the thumbnail. The thumbnail, like the thumbnail was too hot for YouTube. So mm. we've got a special YouTube friendly thumbnail which is unlike the one that was available on Patreon. It's a Playboy game, by the way, just, mm. uh, just yeah. so you know. Um, quick aside, mm. I thought I thought in advance of because on my on my streams I've been doing the custom roster in the wrestling, mm. and I was just about to start a new season, which meant I could add some new people on. And I thought one of the characters involved in this episode of Weir Weirdest Games Ever is so iconic that I had to include her yeah. in it. So I did it in advance, and she. Flippin took the the women's champion to the limit in her first match. Nearly won. So close to winning. So if you want to nice. see ch near championship winning wrestler and also play actual playboy person, you watch this Weirdest Games Ever on Sunday. Yeah. Mm. It's going to be well good. I like that everyone who wasn't a patron was like, who's this random character? Oh, I just said, this <laughs> this person is going to be important. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Next week, you will you will have begged me to put her in. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, if, too if people are keen on begging mops, wait until they meet. Oh, me, me wait, until you meet, me, the, wait until you meet this person. This person. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, we're going to go now. Thank you so much for listening slash watching. We'll see you all next time. Look after yourselves. Goodbye, everybody. Oh, goodbye. We're also sponsored by... Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> I was going to... I'm flipping on one today, aren't I? What's going on? Elden say. Ring's closed knitwear vest coming soon to stores. Probably uh, H&M. They stock all the weird branded stuff, don't they? Primark. 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 That was it. That was yeah. the one. Yeah, Primark. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye-bye.